Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes, and as part of this series on playback in Dorico, we're going to start looking at expression maps. But what is an expression map and what are they used for? Well, I'll be answering those questions in this video and walking you through how to create one for yourself in the next video. So if you're already familiar with expression maps, there's a link in the description to skip ahead. Otherwise, stick around to get up to speed. As I mentioned in my previous video, an expression map contains the information Dorico needs to access and control the features of a sound library. Virtual instruments often have several features that are designed to make them sound more lifelike. Just throwing notes at them isn't going to give you the best results, in much the same way as playing the real-world versions of those instruments. You can generally produce many different effects and sounds through an instrument by modifying the way you play it. Think of the bowed and plucked sounds of a string instrument. And we communicate with the performer, directing them to play those special techniques via standard markings in our musical scores. In the case of our string instrument, we do this with arco and pitz markings. It's the same principle with VST instruments. Unless Dorico can communicate with the instrument that your music is asking for different techniques, then it'll just fire off notes that'll end up all being played the same way. Expression maps are literally the map that connects the information Dorico has about how the music should be performed with the VST instrument that will ultimately play that music. Think of it this way. You're playing, let's say, a violin, and you come across a pizzicato marking in the score. This fires off something in your brain that tells you you need to stop playing the violin with your bow. Actually, don't drop it and start plucking the strings instead. That's the expression map at work, and it's just what's happening here in Dorico. Now, one of the most important ways to make a virtual instrument sound more realistic is through dynamics and expression. These are often some of the biggest features of virtual sound libraries, and so we have ensured that expression maps can feed directly into those features. Let's think about real instruments again for a moment. Once you've played a note on the piano, you cannot make that note sound any louder. You'd have to re-strike the key. That's not the same for many other instruments. Think of trumpets, flutes, violins, and so on. You can hold the same note and crescendo and decrescendo through it to your heart's content. Virtual sound libraries use different technical methods to achieve that sort of sonic control. So expression maps need to be aware of those methods and be able to hook into them. Another important step in achieving a more convincing performance from a computer is introducing small amounts of randomization, even imprecision, that more accurately mimics humans playing. Dorico has extensive playback options that adds variance to note onsets and durations, or deals with things like the fact that a human physically cannot play many repeated notes without some amount of gap between them, whether that's to lift the finger to re-strike or take a breath and so on. We all recognize the need to play notes under a slur, more legato. So Dorico has options for all of these sorts of things. But in the same way as different physical instruments can have different levels of responsiveness that require you to play them differently, so can different virtual instruments. And as a result, expression maps can take those differences into account. You can see the expression map that an instrument in your project is using in play mode. Select the instrument in the tracks view and look in the routing section of the track inspector. You can set the expression map with this pop-up control. You'll only need to do this if you've manually changed the sound being used for your instrument. And you can show the expression map to edit it with this button. Let's look at the expression map dialog to familiarize ourselves before we try to create our own in the next video. We can see the list of all available expression maps in the sidebar list. We've loaded a violin section player in our project. So Dorico has loaded the Iconica Sketch first violins preset and set the expression map to Iconica Sketch violins, violas, and celli. You'll discover that one expression map can sometimes serve multiple instrument presets in a library as they'll share common data that can be reused. That's a great time saver when setting up maps for a new library. 
There's the option to include certain data about the expression map here in the top section, as well as settings for things like how to handle microtonal playback and pitch bends, and whether or not to make use of Dorico's stage templates. Some libraries are recorded with the musicians actually seated in the correct spatial location for, say, an orchestral ensemble, so you don't need Dorico to emulate that with its live stage. The switches section is kind of the tentpole of the whole expression map. This is where you map musical markings in the Dorico project to technique and articulation settings of the sound library preset. Looking at the Iconica sketch violin one preset in the Hallian Sonic, we can see that it's capable of playing the violin sound with all these different techniques. Short staccato or spiccato sounds, long sustain and legato sounds. And these special techniques such as pizzicato and tremolo. You can switch between these different sounds as you play using key switches, which are special keys saved in the preset for each of the different techniques. You can literally press these keys as you play to trigger the change in sounds, as long as you have a large enough keyboard. Or you can get Dorico to trigger playing the note for you, which fires off the key switch. Back in the expression map, you can see that's exactly what these switches are doing. Selecting pizzicato in the list reveals a key switch event of C sharp zero, which is the MIDI note that Dorico will silently play when it comes across a pizzicato marking in the music for violin one. We can see then that playing a C sharp zero MIDI note in Hallian Sonic changes the sound of the violin preset to pizzicato. All very clever. On the right of the dialogue, we can see how the expression map is dealing with dynamics for each of the switches. Pizzicato is one of those sounds that cannot be made louder once you've played it. In Hallian Sonic, we can see that the volume dynamic for the pizzicato sound is determined by how hard you strike the key, mimicking how you play a piano louder or more softly. This data is recorded by MIDI keyboards and sent to the computer as something called note velocity. So that's what we want the expression map to use to influence the volume dynamic. With that set, Dorico will automatically input different note velocities for different dynamic markings in the music. If we look at the legato switch for the Iconica violins, we can see that it doesn't matter how hard we strike the key, the dynamic doesn't alter. That's because this is one of those sounds that can change its dynamic over the course of its duration. So note velocity won't help in this case, as that occurs only once per note. Instead, we can use the modulation wheel of a MIDI keyboard to modify the dynamic of the legato technique, which means we can perform this continuous stream of crescendos and decrescendos that are not linked to the note onsets of the instrument. The MIDI specification handles these continuous controllers as MIDI CC or control change messages, with certain CC numbers being commonly associated with particular purposes such as modulation, expression, and the sustain pedal for keyboard instruments. And it's those MIDI control changes that Dorico can be set to use in order to control the volume dynamic of these sorts of sound presets. Okay, so hopefully now you understand a little more about what expression maps are and why they're so helpful to Dorico's approach to playback. The problem is that not all sound libraries are created using the same settings. As a result, it's likely that you'll need a custom expression map or indeed a set of expression maps in order to use your chosen sound library within Dorico. As I mentioned in the first video of this series, we do make available several playback templates that serve many of the most popular sound libraries, which are comprised of these custom expression maps bundled with everything you need to just load an instrument and start making music with one of those libraries. There's a link in the description, so perhaps check those out before going through the process of creating your own. The original expression maps were designed to work in Cubase, and there is the facility to import Cubase expression maps into Dorico. Just be aware that the mappings of the switches won't necessarily match anything that Dorico knows about by default, so you will very likely need to edit them to be compatible. 
They could work as a good starting point though. So if you've already gone to the trouble of defining the key switches for a particular library you've worked with in Cubase, it might be worth a look. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to create your own expression map. So please do keep watching. If you've enjoyed watching this, and I hope you found it helpful, please do consider liking the video and subscribe to our channel. Click the bell to get notified when we upload a new video. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching. Thank you.